So at this point, I'm going to transition to the looking glass factory, my holographic display. Firstly, I want to say I am not a salesperson for the looking glass factory. I'm just a, a hollow hacker. I'm someone who is interested in it. And what I'm going to demo here today is just as a user of it, uh, they actually have a closed beta right now. So this is a live integration into Blender where normally this runs based off of Unity, for example, or, or other pre-built applications. Uh, but in the integration with Blender, I'm able to actually work in Blender and have my 3D display off to my side showing the same thing that I'm working on in real time. It actually functions as if it's a, another camera. And it's super cool. Uh, I mentioned it's a closed beta. They are working on open sourcing it. Uh, in the future, um, not liberty to say when that's going to be, but um, it's not open, open for Blender right now, but it will be, I'll say soon. It wouldn't be very fun to just screen share a, uh, a display I have next to my screen. So I'm going to set up a camera view of it. And I may have to adjust this a little bit, uh, but essentially, yeah, so that's my, my looking glass display. I'll zoom out a little bit here. So you can see it kind of has this thick glass. Um, it's kind of interesting right now, it's showing just my uh, Windows backdrop. Um, but even as displaying that, you'll notice that it's completely clear. So I can like, you know, show my hand on the other side. It's like completely clear from that perspective. Uh, but when you look from this perspective, obviously it's not showing anything right now, but you do see a true 3D view of whatever it is you're looking at. And the way it does this, is it will render 45 different views from either Blender or Unity or whatever it may be that you're looking at it through. I'll render these 45 different views horizontally so that I can be standing in multiple different positions. It's not like I have to be in one specific spot. I can see from multiple positions the actual 3D view of my scene. Yeah, so less talk and more uh, getting into it. That'll do. And yeah, so the way it works is in the tab, I've already installed and enabled the add-on, but I have this looking glass tab here. I'm going to press this button for create a render setup. And what that has done is created this little sort of prism, trapezoid object, rectangular prism, I suppose. And this effect effectively is the viewport display, the actual 3D space of the viewport display. So if I want it to be similar to my camera view, like let's say I want to look at the cube from this perspective, what I need to do is rotate it along the X axis, and then I'm going to scale it around so it kind of is put, making sure this cube is entirely inside the view of this cube. Uh, and maybe instead of a cube, let's actually do something more interesting like Suzanne the monkey, for example. Uh, so I now have Suzanne in the middle of my 3D display, of course. Uh, move back a little bit. I'll move this guy around. Um, and so what this has done behind the scenes is it's actually added a bunch of cameras and parented it to this special mess. You could see actually in the uh, render layer setup that's set up to be uh, a multi, not passes, but a multi-view camera. That's pretty interesting. And then what we'll see in a moment is that it actually will take over a image viewer to display this on an external display. So I'm going to create a looking glass window over here. I'm going to go to view, looking glass live view. And if it's working correctly, you'll see this kind of weird garbled display. So you'll see how there's, I can't even zoom out because it, it's rendering the OpenGL uh, constantly. Uh, but it, it looks like kind of a sliced view. So obviously in our 2D screen over here, that's not very uh, attractive looking. But as soon as I scooch this over to our looking glass, you get a little preview. Well, actually, I want to make sure I minimize this bottom part here. So I take that down. Now when I press Alt F11, boom, we have our 3D display and I can tell you, oh, that's so cool. It's so cool to see like an actual 3D thing just sitting on my, my desk. I'm not wearing anything, um, but yeah, so you're not very convinced. That just looks like my Blender screen over here. So to illustrate and prove that this is actually 3D, I'm going to, let's just throw in like a sphere, for example. I'm gonna scale this down, I'm gonna move it over. I'm gonna scale it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to place it so that in this current position, you can see how over here it's blocking the eye. You can see right now that the, the, uh, the sphere is blocking the monkey's eye. I'm going to move it a little bit out here. See where it kind of clips through the edge of this viewing plane. Uh, but as I rotate 
the screen physically, you can see I'm not changing anything, but you're able to look around this sphere in 3D space. So that's really showing how this is like truly a 3D display. I can see occluded things that are not there before. Even just beyond the sphere, you can see how the ears kind of show up in perspective. Uh, and you have a, a decent viewing range too. Like I'm not just moving a little bit. This is quite a bit that I'm rotating it. At some point you do find that it will kind of start to like right there, it starts to switch over and start like repeating the views. But um, this is a solid, solid range of motion here. And so you can have like a crowd of people sitting behind this display and they're all seeing it in 3D from their own vantage points. So that's super cool. Yeah, so some use cases of this amazing technology that I came up with, uh, one is for animation, another could be for flying around in a scene, uh, and sculpting is one. So I'm gonna go through just a few just uh, example scenes. Let's say, let's go into this file that I downloaded from Blendswap, for example. In terms of the interactivity of this, uh, as this is rendering, you'll see that as I scale and move this object around, it's obviously updating in real time. It even responds to things like the, uh, yeah, like the, the viewport display. So for example, you can see the, like again, I know you can't see it on the screen, but as I move this around and kind of see how it's looking, I'm actually seeing even the controls in 3D, which is like super cool. So as I move this around, you can see different things happening here. I can move up the, uh, the, the wheels, for example. And it, it's really sad that you can't see this in person, uh, on the live screen, it just looks flat, but if I were to kind of illustrate what I'm able to see over here, if I rotate this to be over in this perspective, and maybe move it down a little bit. So on the 3D display, uh, maybe go more like this. Yeah, so for example, in this view on the 2D live cast, you can't see really the difference between the perspective of this front uh, partial wing versus the wheel down below. But to me, as a viewer sitting here, I can see very clearly how the relationship of depth of those things two are. And maybe as I rotate and kind of, eh, you can kind of help see a little bit, but again, it's easier when you're sitting here and seeing, okay, yes, I can see the depth there, exactly what that is. And I can do things like if I want to uh, focus on the, the backside over here, I'm gonna place my cursor and then shift S, uh, selection to offset. I'll rotate this guy around a little bit. I can scale it in and go right in onto this section of the, uh, yeah, the back and I can play around with maybe the, uh, the engines here, different scales. Um, yeah, that's so cool on the 3D display here. So if I like even zoom in a little bit farther, Oops, it's this guy here. So as I rotate the display around, you can see how it's reacting and, and really showing this in full 3D. So I have my animation over here. I can start playing it on this screen. And you can see that, yeah, it's playing back the animation. Uh, it is worth noting that it does do a little bit of a performance drop just to do this. And I suppose that shouldn't be surprising. So if you imagine what this is really doing, it's taking this viewport that I'm looking at right now, it's rendering it actually 45 different times. Again, you can, if I go Alt-H, you can see all the cameras that it's rendering and pushing that onto a display that has a resolution of, uh, I think it's 2560 by 1600 or something like that. Uh, so it's a much larger display than my actual monitor here and uh, rendering this view so that it has each of those perspectives. So uh, I do find that sometimes it can be a little bit slow, but again, they're working on improving the performance, um, but it does work in this use case. So like I'm, I'm showing my animation here. I'm also screen sharing over, uh, over the live stream. So that's part of why the uh, slowdown is happening. Um, yeah, so one of the other interesting use cases that I found with using this is for sculpting, actually. Let's go back to a, a new scene, add a, a monkey again. We'll, we'll torture Suzanne a little bit here. Uh, let's make smooth, for example. Let's subdivide at least once and then we'll enable Dynatopo. Uh, but first I'm gonna add my uh, window over here. But yeah, what I was getting to is being able to see your sculpt in real time in 3D really helps you get those details down. So if I go in and enable Dynatopo, sculpt mode, and then go into tools, and let's do that. So I'm gonna, let's, let's say I want to add some veins around the, uh, the face here. So that's, that's fine for me to do. You can see that it's updating in real time on my 3D display, and I can see it even from this distance, I'll call it. I can see a little bit of a difference of the depth between like the nose and this surface down here. Um, but it would still be useful if I zoomed in a little bit. So I'll move this in. 
uh, I'll zoom down some so I'm really focused on this area. And then maybe I even want to, uh, you know, rotate it a little bit so I can see perspective from there, but uh, and zoom even farther. We see I'm very zoomed in without even changing modes. I was just selecting the box. Now I'm back on the mesh and I'm back in sculpting, doing weird things. And I've got always constantly rotating the view. I can just immediately see what I'm looking at over there, which is a super awesome thing. Um, so, and then if I want to move, for example, over to the ear over here, again, I could take that, move my cursor, shift S, offset, and then just rotate it around as I need. And now, boom, I, I'm seeing the ear in full, full 3D, without any glasses over here in the corner. And I select my mesh again, kind of, you know, sculpt around, smooth it out. Again, same common as in the animation scene where it can, if you have a heavier mesh, it will start to slow down a little bit. Um, so in that case, it would be sometimes useful to, if I were to go into a viewer here, if I were to just like pause the looking glass for a moment, um, if it will pause that, do, 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 and then it should stop. Um, or honestly, yeah, there it goes. So now it stops. So now I have like full responsiveness again, so I can do a little bit more. Um, but uh, in the future, they may have like a toggle or something um, where I can go in and actually just pause and start the, the live display. Um, but it's, it's super nice to have that. So I just create a display again over here. Uh, Alt 11. And there you go. Um, yeah, like I said, it's a, uh, it's a, a beta add-on over here. So the, huh. yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, something you're also able to do with this looking glass display is you can obviously render in 3D. In the viewport, unfortunately, you can't view cycles. So like if I were to display this and go over into the looking glass over here and then do Alt F11, uh, if I go into, uh, it's kind of getting in a, in a weird mode again, um, it will it'll respond to other modes of shading, but it won't quite do cycles. Like if I'm going to cycles mode here, um, it's not going to actually respond to that. I'm just going to close one real quick and reopen. You just got into a bad state. Um, but if you render things out, obviously it will respond to whatever format you render to. Because at the end of the day, it's just serving multiple rows or sequences of images for the different views of the looking glass. So you can actually view in and load uh, previous renders to, to see. Other interesting things to notice is even like a, a focus sort of point of the display. So as I, I'm not sure how well you'll see it on the, the 2D uh, live stream over here, uh, but essentially if I get a lot closer, even before it clips out like that, uh, I'm seeing a little bit of a sort of depth of field blur, which is kind of nice. And the same on the uh, farther end as I get farther away. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what it's looking like. That's the uh, holographic display from Looking Glass. Again, not sponsored. I'm just someone who thought it was cool. Uh, I bought one on Kickstarter, and I I really enjoyed it so far. Um, the Blender add-on again is closed beta right now, but in some time it will be open source and available to uh, uh, to use. So bear bear that in mind if you do end up wanting to. Uh, invest in something like this, but again, it's the Looking Glass Factory is a company. Um, super cool guys, and um, I guess also to recap who I am, uh, didn't get to this after the end of my last talk, but um, again, my name is Patrick W. Crawford. I'm the duck cow often. If you have questions or you're trying to use the Looking Glass display or you're trying to update your add-ons for Blender 2.8 and 2.7, these are all the various different places you can find me. I'm happy to be of help. So don't feel shy of reaching out to me. And yeah, thanks so much for the time.